A very special guest right here on ET now, Mohan Parasana, India's new Solicitor General, joins me on the show for a more in-depth conversation about what really his office means and what is it that keeps him busy. Thanks very much for joining us Thank on you. the show, sir. Many congratulations. Uh, you won some of the biggest cases for the government, so one believes this was coming for a long time. Uh, but the question that everybody wants to ask at this stage is that we've seen two Solicitor Generals in the last two years. Uh, largely resigned because of their differences with law ministry. As you're, as you're coming into this very important position, you are going to formulate opinions, you are going to perhaps advise the government as to what should the legal steps be. Uh, how do you view the responsibility of your office and how do you actually look at the controversy that has surrounded it? See, the office of the Solicitor General hmm. is uh, a very onerous office. Of course, even as additional Solicitor General, you handled uh, almost similar types of matters, mm. but when it comes to the Attorney General or the Solicitor General, mm. they are the two principal law officers, mm. with the Attorney General being the captain and the Solicitor General being the vice captain mm. of the team. And uh, this job will definitely involve advising the government on intricate legal issues, which may sometimes have public policy overtones or loosely called the political overtones mm. and as regards uh, the controversy which you were mentioning right i felt i think uh, both resigned for their own reasons and uh, essentially appointment to the office of solicitor general is a decision taken by the government right how does the Solicitor General then behave? Do you go by just the legal uh, facts of the case or do you actually then go by what the government's stance is? The Solicitor General actually is expected to act independently. Mm. And as uh, one of the principal law officers of the government, our primary duty is to the court. And as uh, I've been repeatedly saying, Mothilal Sitrawad, mm. the very first Attorney General, said that the principal duty is to the court and then only to the client, namely the government. Mm. But uh, definitely, I think uh, it is a duty of every law officer, not only the Solicitor General, to advise the government honestly and fairly. Mm. And it is for the government to take their advice or reject it. What is the exact relationship between a law officer of the highest nature, an attorney general and a solicitor general, vis-a-vis -vis the law minister. Do you report into him? Uh, do you follow his instructions? Or do you go by your own call on specific cases? What really is the nature of relationship? Because there seems to be, you know, uh, no clarity, at least in the public space on that. There's lots of confusion in this area. Hmm. Actually, the attorney general in the U.S. Hmm. is the law minister himself. That's right. In India, the law minister is a part of the cabinet mm. and uh, he is naturally part of the executive. He takes both policy decisions and political decisions. Right. Whereas the Attorney General and the Solicitor General are not concerned with political decisions. Mm. They are only concerned with the legality of any other decisions taken by the government and advise the government from time to time. It's not a question as though see an Attorney General has to report to the Law Minister. Mm. It is not a question of there being any subordinate superior relationship, like a master and servant relationship. Right. You are an independent professional mm. and the government has trusted that you rightly advise them. Does this concern you, does this worry you at one level that in the recent past the government has lost a whole host of legal battles against private individuals, against PSUs and one such reason perhaps seems to be uh, lack of clear instructions. What would you attribute this to? I mean, in my assessment, is it lack of clear instructions? Is it the fact that at one level... Actually, let me hear from you and then I'll probe you further. See, I won't say lack of clear instructions. I think some cases are difficult to win, no? Mm. Whatever you may say. Why? Say because of uh, the unreasonableness of the law mm. or the unreasonableness of the decision taken. Mm. And uh, it will be rather difficult to support many of the orders you can give me illustrations in all those cases. There must have been some sort of an unfairness or unreasonableness at some level. So what would you attribute the government's bad performance in legal cases to? Governments, I want to... Wrong say, calls? 
I won't say bad performance in that sense. Possibly, I think uh, a judgment uh, a judgment was taken in a particular matter, or a decision was taken in a particular matter, keeping certain factors in mind, mm. which actually proved to be wrong. Would you want to name any case right now which comes to your mind, which perhaps was a little like that, met this criteria? No, well, there are there have been many instances in the past as well, and there have been some instances now actually. The government is being criticized as being anti-investor mm. in taxation matters. That's right, yes. And the retrospective amendments have come in for very deep uh, criticism. Mm. And uh, it will be a quite a onerous task or a formidable task to defend those type of cases, particularly in the light of the sentiments which have actually been whipped up now. In your opinion, do you think it will be a good decision, given the circumstances, to do away with the retrospective tax? Yeah, I personally feel that uh, the amendments should be had a fresh look into. Hmm. They must, because particularly in the light of expert committee recommendations, like right. Parthas Hadley yes, Tome, yes, yes, and those committees have been appointed at the instance of the PMO, hmm. and actually they, their recommendations I think, should not be brushed aside or go waste. Therefore, the government has to take a serious look. And we should also at the same time keep the confidence of the various investors, which have become quite wary. Mm. And in, we must actually only slightly tweak or make some slight amendments which do not affect vested rights mm. or change the position drastically, you know, what it was, mm. or gives an impression that the government wants to override a court decision. In that opinion and in your assessment, I'm a layperson, I'm not a legal authority like you are. In your assessment, it seems that you are of the view that the retrospective tax amendment, because of the serious concerns it has raised, should perhaps be done away with in the budget. Not done away with. What, what, what I would say is actually they can tweak it. I personally felt, I think, you need not have gone into making wide-scale retrospective amendments to every section, no? Mm, mm. Section 9, That's Section right. 195, mm. Section 163. So when you say tweaking, what kind of tweaking See, you will you can it actually entail? explain the definition of transfer, 247, Section mm. 2, subsection 47, mm. and stop with that. They could always say transfer means this. It can also include transfer of underlying assets. Mm. And uh, transfer as of now seeks to bring within, within its fold any transaction which is direct or indirect. They could have clarified on that and um, tinkered only to that extent. And do you think that will address concerns that have been raised? That will have possibly satisfied the concerns of the government at that point of time. And uh, I think that should have been suffice instead of actually making wide-scale amendments, virtually giving an impression that you are trying to not neutralize the judgment of the Supreme Court, but seeking to overrule, overrule the judgment that, of yes. the Supreme Court. In the garb of getting a retrospective tax yes. legislation. Sir, uh, I know at the highest level in the finance ministry, uh, it is being very, very actively considered to tweak the retrospective tax amendment, to make changes so that a settlement for Vodafone can also be achieved. Uh, I know the finance minister will be seeking the cabinet's of, uh, you know, authorization to do so. Uh, but has the finance ministry got in touch with you, uh, seeking a legal opinion on not this matter? Yet. Not it. Do you expect them to? No, because in b budget uh, discussions are something which is confidential. Sure. Therefore, I think possibly, I think they may, they can come. And if they come, whatever I feel, I'll just convey to the government. I have a quick question to ask you, and this is uh, this is away from retrospective tax legislations. I'm going to come back to tax in just a bit, but. Uh, on, on 2G per se, and this is something you've been very, very closely associated with, the telecom litigation in India, uh, and I think that's the sector that sees most litigation. Uh, but I think in the last week itself, the Supreme Court has said that all spectrum that has been vacated due to cancellation of license should be put up for auction. That clearly wasn't as per the government's blueprint. Government decided to keep some away from refarming and then auction only a part of it. Uh, how do you think these observations really disrupt the government's plans. Do you think it's coming a little too late and too close to the auction? Naturally, there are a lot of concerns actually. And the government was also keeping a certain element of spectrum possibly for other security considerations. Right. And uh, 
the court has given its opinion. Some feel actually court has actually sought to enter into the area of policy making. Mm. But uh, now the court has given directions, the government has to take a call. As I said, it has come too close to mm. the 2G auctions. That will unsettle so many things, will create a lot of other complexities. We have to tackle it, no? I like the fact that you're being candid. I like the fact that as the, as the topmost legal officer, you are saying that you will have to tackle issues that will rise out of it. Uh, don't you think the Supreme Court, in its, in its wise judgment, should have then made it or, or clarified this a long time back? Because there was this debate whether the spectrum should be held back for refarming, whether the entire thing should be put up for auction. Why so late in the day? And, and, and you know, this is going to create trouble. The NIA has been issued. Uh, potential bidders have been informed of how much spectrum will be available. All of that will now need to change. Perhaps there will be a third round of auction for 18 circles where we did see auction happen. See, possibly the Supreme Court uh, was of the view hmm. that many of the facts were not placed before it earlier. Hmm. Had they actually placed all facts, possibly they could have said every spectrum should only be auctioned. That is the, that's been the reaction of the Supreme Court. Uh, therefore, there have been lots of, I think, uh, differences. The court thinks like that. The government has tried to put forth its view before the court, which has not found favor with the court. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I said the government has to now rework out so many things and seek to get over this complex piece. I, I know you wear many hats, and one of that is the Solicitor General, but the other hat is also somebody who understands the telecom sector. Uh, in the government's will, they thought they will retain some spectrum for refarming, they will substitute the efficient spectrum with a little less efficient spectrum, make some money there for the exchequer. Uh, Refarming may not be possible if the entire spectrum is sold. I do not know what the dynamics of the auction will be, uh, but isn't that a fair argument as well? Uh, they were retaining spectrum to refarm, and that may not be possible now. That may not be possible unless and until the court is again approached hmm. and uh, told uh, in a very convincing fashion that uh, we are not withholding spectrum for any collateral purpose. We are actually holding it in larger public interest. Mm -hmm. And the court should actually seek to modify its order and uh, permit the government uh, to go ahead with uh, some important uh, decisions which uh, is going to take with regard to allocation of spectrum for farming or refarming. As the Solicitor General, will you advise the government to approach the courts on this matter? Possibly. I think uh, if uh, I am consulted, I will actually approach the government approach the court. I feel the Supreme Court would certainly appreciate reasonable arguments put before it. And refarming you think is reasonable enough? That's a reasonable argument. Do you think in the entire 2G spectrum case, and, and pardon me for, for putting this before you, uh, because now the buck stops with you at many levels as far as legal aspects of the government is concerned, do you think at one level the Supreme Court, uh, in the Supreme Court, the whole 2G case of the government has not been as well represented as you would have wanted it to? See, the problem is... Uh, because too many lose and still remain. They see, the problem is... Uh, it's my own personal view. Sure. Whenever actually a patient is handled by too many specialists, there's bound to be complexities. Hmm. Because each one approaches a particular problem in a different manner. Each one has a different sort of a diagnosis. And uh, you would have seen in the 2G spectrum case, there has been a whole battery of lawyers representing the government and there have been changes also frequently. Totally. And uh, possibly I think there must have been differences in the perception of each council, which is natural, mm. which was not very conducive to the interests of the government. Therefore, I think possibly, I think uh, the case was, could not have been presented consistently. And, uh, and which is why there are just so many loose ends that remain that is each why time I, the court... Actually, possibly, I feel there are loose ends. As the Solicitor General, now that you take command of most things in the government as far as their litigation is concerned, uh, would you also want to approach the Supreme Court with a completely different view on this, on this no, matter? That entirely depends upon what the government thinks. I mm -hmm. can't take a call on that. Sure. It's a policy issue. Hmm. That's a matter, I think, entirely left to the government. There is something else that the court has decided. Uh, the court has said that for um, 
uh, for operators who did not participate in the 2G auction, operations should stop immediately. One such operator is Systema. Uh, now, while we talk about Systema, there are other ramifications as well. It's a Russian player. We've got a lot of oil Absolutely. interest in Russia. Uh, we could perhaps be looking at an arbitration. Uh, so that is one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that uh, Systema's contention is that there was never a CDMA auction in November, and so how would we participate, and which is why we should be allowed to uh, continue operations. Uh, well, what is your legal opinion on that matter? See, I have actually been the view that uh, this is a very sensitive matter where the court has squashed, no? Right, that's right. Once the court has squashed, mm. we can't take any call without actually seeking further appropriate uh, clarifications mm. of the order passed by the Supreme Court. Mm. We can't uh, take upon ourselves everything right. and seek to revive a particular decision which has been quashed by the Supreme Court. Therefore, system has case, I think again we'll have to move the Supreme Court if any clarifications are required. Mm and highlight the peculiarities of that case and what they are saying. No? And, and actually, system has a point of view. They say that when the whole 2G uh, licenses were allocated, they were not a part of the GSM lobby. They were not a GSM player. They were a CDMA player. There was no demand for CDMA. So ideally, the licenses cannot be quashed. As the government, and the government has had a soft corner on this matter for Systema, of course, there are other larger implications with Systema and Russia. We've got a lot of oil interest there. Absolutely. Uh, will you be then uh, seeking clarifications from the court on this matter? If I am asked, I would actually advise them to actually move the Supreme Court for clarification. The curative was dismissed. They can still go for clarification? Curative was dismissed with regard to the main judgment. That's right. Review was dismissed. Curative was dismissed. Hmm. Suppose if there are in parts, hmm. if there are some, I think, obvious errors or some mistakes which have to be corrected without actually affecting the basic uh, tenor of the judgment, right. in such an event, we can uh, seek the Supreme Court for a clarification or modification because actually, as you point out, Systema says that uh, they were only into CDMA. Right, exactly. So Supreme Court is not concerning, about, concerning itself about CDMA players, the 2G matter. Therefore, these things will have to be elaborated in a proper fashion hmm. and the Supreme Court has to be persuaded. In your opinion, uh, there are certain operators who believe that they want an out-of-court settlement with the government. They do not want litigation. Loop is one such operator. Uh, I think the DOT is still thinking about it. But if they were to approach the law ministry and in turn you, uh, what is your opinion? Do you think the government should actually settle with some operators out of court and not go in for litigation? Because litigation at the end of the day wastes a lot of time, effort, energy, uh, and also, you know, precious time of legal officers like yourself. See, any settlement also, insofar as the government is concerned, right. should be in concern of the public interest. Mm -hmm. and tomorrow they should not say, see, this decision has been taken arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. And again, the government should not face, I think, uh, strictures or whatever it I'm is. I'm going to go back court. to the Vodafone uh, judgment. Uh, you've been very candid, and thanks for that, that, you know, uh, policy should ideally not be changed overnight and not uh, at least seen to be overruling the Supreme Court judgment. The government is now trying to do a settlement with Vodafone. Are there any legal implications to that? Or in do you think fact, the sovereign is well within no its rights? No legal implications. I was saying in one of the tax seminar, you know, hmm. Vodafone could have offered this sort of a settlement before the Supreme Court itself. Hmm. The Supreme Court could have, in the exercise of its powers under Article 142, hmm. would have done complete justice. It would have also been easier for the government to get the seal from the Supreme Court of any offer of settlement because there will be no criticism. Do you think at times like these when there is this whole civil society movement, there is a lot of politics that's involved in every decision, a settlement in India is never looked at as it is all over the world. I mean, all over the world people settle tax issues. Uh, do you think a settlement will be possible? You are very right, actually. A settlement in India is actually looked at very, very suspiciously. That's right. Even if it has the seal of the court, mm. like the Bhopal gas True, exactly. tragedy. Mm. Therefore, I think here, yeah, the government is quite sensitive to that. And it can't readily actually go in for a settlement in these sort of disputes which have engaged public attention. See, some years back, the government settled with the ITC group of companies. Exactly, yes. In the excise matter. Mm. That was a different issue. There, the government was getting lots of revenues. It was a midway house, no future litigations, etc. But Vodafone will involve policy ramifications. Mm. 
So do you think it will be tough for the government Therefore, to settle? Therefore, it will be quite difficult, quite difficult actually to arrive at a settlement, what will be the terms of settlement and uh, how actually the government can actually be, make the public trust that the settlement was quite transparent. But because there are groups which, which may say that having made a transfer amendment, why do you want to go for a settlement? Settlement. And there is always an arbitration route, route left for Vodafone and also the government. I, I will ask you a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think is the possibility that the government and Vodafone will smoke the peace pipe? I would actually say as of now, it's at I think 4 points, 4 to 10. That's, that's a low possibility. Your predecessor, Owen to Nariman, and I'm, I'm obviously not questioning anything that he did, or I don't want you to comment on that, but your pre predecessor was very keen that a seven-judge bench reviews the Vodafone tax order. He was preparing uh, on that. What is your opinion on this? Do you think that order at all needs a review? I also feel that uh, in many respects, mm. the order requires reconsideration. Mm. And... Uh, in fact, uh, I have the greatest of respect for uh, my predecessor, Roynton. We discussed this issue. Sure. And we strongly felt that in some matter, we should somehow persuade the Supreme Court to refer the Vodafone judgment to a larger bench. Mm. And now I think possibly we have got a good opportunity now with the Andhra Pradesh High Court holding in favor of Sanofi. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So that judgment, I think, is likely to be appealed to the Supreme Court. Mm. Andhra Pradesh government, Andhra Pradesh uh, High Court possibly has uh, gone, I think, one or two steps more than Vodafone. Mm. And uh, this will be open for a lot of debate. Many people might welcome the judgment. But uh, this ultimately, I think, will have to receive the attention of the Supreme Court. And as already in one other matter concerning Vodafone Towers mm. from Gujarat. That's right. Which primarily involved... Uh, only the correctness of Azadi. Hmm. Notice was issued on the plea made by my predecessor right. for referring to a larger bench. Hmm. This will be a good chance for the government to argue and persuade the court to refer this issue before a larger bench. Will you be advising the government to do so? Has any work started on that? I would actually personally want this matter to be once for all settled hmm. by a larger bench because the Azadi McDowell debate hmm. has been going on and on. Even I think after the Supreme Court debate, uh, judgment, there have been views, counter views. So you think this is an opportune time to actually move court even on the Vodafone tax issue per se? Yes. When will you be moving Supreme Court against the Hyderabad, uh, Andhra Pradesh the judgment High Court? is out only on Friday. Hmm. I think we have to examine the judgment in detail. Right. And uh, after we examine it, the matter has to be examined by uh, the CBDT, mm -hmm. the Finance Ministry and the law ministry. And I personally feel, I think, uh, if a decision is taken, a decision should be taken for filing an SLP. Right. That, I think, uh, will uh, be taken in a period not exceeding two months. I want to ask you on another very, very high-profile case, which you actually won for the government, and that's the RIL gas case. RIL and government seem to be at war as far as that KGD6 gas is concerned, over uh, cost recovery, over arbitration and other issues. Are you a little surprised that this is where matters have come to be, from A, both sides being on one side of the table, to now at warring ends? Yeah, that's quite unfortunate. But possibly because of uh, the subsequent developments, mm which has taken place with regard to actually how much of oil they are able to generate or explore. I think uh, it all belied their expectations. Mm. And that is the reason why actually RIL is trying to fight with the government. But uh, we are actually governed by the terms of the contract. Mm. We have to strictly go by the terms of the contract. See, merely because I think something else happens, which is not force major. You can't actually ignore the contractual provisions. You have a busy schedule ahead and a platter that's absolutely full. We wish you all the very best with Thank that. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, sir.